this video is about the hubs and Zeno teardown so we're going to be tearing this down all the way down so we will be able to do a complete rebuild So let's get started. Uh, one of the first things that we'll need to do is turn it over, guys. And we're gonna take off these little tiny screws. Uh, I'm gonna leave this on for now, but uh, yeah, we're gonna be tearing this thing down all the way down to the bone. All right, so let's get to it. So guys, we're gonna be using uh, these glasses again. And you can see that uh, they're kind of handy because you use different magnifications. I'm going to pick right in the middle, okay? And now uh, we're going to put those guys in. Snap them in, just like that. Clean them up. Get them looking good. All right. Still a little, little dirty, but we'll clean them up. Yeah, it's much better. And uh, they, they have the rechargeable USB port for charging the battery, so it's kind of a really nice product, right? So, anyway, I'll put in the link below uh, in the description so you guys can purchase this if you like. And for the spirit of full disclosure, if you use my link below, I'll, I'll get a little uh, credit for the sale, and uh, it'll, help, it'll help the channel out. So, all right, let's get to it. Uh, take off this little cover here and uh, pretty straightforward guys Just gonna take this screw we're gonna off. take this little cover off first and it requires two screws to take this little cover off and there are little yeah, tiny screws so it was nice to use the magnetic tip screw driver and now it's a triple four triple zero uh, screw Phillips screwdriver that I'm using and the next thing we got to take off is that the gimbal right so it takes four screws to get the gimbal undone two in the bottom and two in the top here and uh, they're machine little screws so again we'll keep those separate from the rest and it's always nice to have one of these blue pads and I'll put in the link in the description where you can purchase this uh, blue pad also so handy it keeps things so organized all right so uh, i got the gimbal up and it's time to release that mylar ribbon cable as you can see it's pretty easy just just a little pry bar to lift it up and it comes right out from the the connector be careful with put it in a safe place so now it's time to take the screws off that will release the top plastic piece that gives me access to the printed circuit boards okay so there's actually four screws here on the bottom and um, I missed two of them and you'll see later in the video that I had to come back and get them and those are two of the ones right by the, where the gimbal are but uh, now it's time just to take off the nameplate pretty easy to do it's, it's got a vent in the back so now you see that I'm going to take the two screws in the back of this top plastic piece and then um, I'll turn it over and start prying it off and turning it over get the screws again I'm keeping the screws separate in different bins and different batches and you can see as I'm using my little pry bar I can't get it off and as I mentioned earlier those are the two little screws that I forgot right there okay and again I turn it over and knock the screws out into my hand and it's time to use the pry bar to release these little tabs this little 
release tabs and there it is now we're looking at the printed circuit board here the main one it has a cpu a compass it's got everything on it so um it is held down by a total of five screws two in the back two in the middle and one up front uh, and i'm gonna go through that fairly quick so one of the things that uh, you'll need to do is be very careful up here with the uh, Actually, I misspoke. I think there's a total of seven screws. That's correct. Seven screws to get it out. Um, there's this little um, black kind of platinum direction. It, it redirects air to the right locations. And uh, the little fan, it's got like a V-shape or a Y-shape there. That is actually a platinum. So it's actually not a bad design for cooling. And here I'm moving... Uh, the antenna wires out of the way and there's the release of that uh, plenum redirect there for the air right trying to keep the right parts cooled and obviously those are going to be the hard work in CPU and you'll see the heat sink here coming up when I turn the board over and once I get it out again keeping all the parts in the right bins making sure that uh, look don't lose track of where the screw goes where and as I start removing the connector here it is actually has silicone on it and uh, but it came off fairly easy and uh, here I am prying it off and, and there's that last screw that I mentioned that I forgot to take and there take out so now it's coming out and on the left side oh I forgot yeah on the top there's that mylar ribbon cable again you need a release so when you release it pull it pull it up first on the side that doesn't have the SD card um, reader on it. Now it's time to get the antenna off here and we, you got to remember we have to mark um, which one belongs where. So I decided just to put a piece of tape on one of them and I knew it was going to be the one farthest away from the front. And again I'm going to pry the second antenna out here with my pry bar and there it is. So you can see that uh, I had dropped a screw in there earlier and I had pulled it out so there's the the guts of it and the next thing I'm going to do is going to take the flow control camera and that sonic sensor that's on the bottom um, so this is the printed circuit board that had that little tiny ribbon cable coming up to the system board or the main board whatever you want to call it so I turned on the light and adjusted the exposure on the camera a little bit too much but you can still see what I'm doing it's a little overexposed but it's still pretty clear view of what I'm doing there's four screws you have to remove and take out and again I'm going to keep them in separate bins and there it is and I'm going to give you a close-up look of the camera and um, that that little board it's a pretty cool looking little board I wish it worked better I mean they got the hardware there they just need to get the software to work better come on Hudson make it work better would you please that would be nice for it to lock in a place like you know all the other drones like the Femi and the DJI's right it's not too much ass guys come on get it done all right so it's time to take off this rear plastic piece uh, and I want to show you that there's four screws on the top and there's two screws on the bottom. You have to turn the drone over to get to them. You have to re remove the access panel to the hinge. And I'm having a hard time figuring out why it's not releasing. And then I finally figured out that, you know, here's that screw I mentioned earlier. It's right underneath this little access panel for the rear legs. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I use my um, X-Acto knife here to get it out. My dollar <laughs> cutting blade that I got from Harbor Freight. And I use, I don't use the sharp end. I use the, uh, the dull end to get it out. It just needs to be a thin piece. And there, I finally figured out why it doesn't come out. You can see the screw. Again, it's a... That one's a quadruple zero uh, Phillips head, and boom, the screws are out. And one of them decides not to come out, but it's okay. I eventually get it out. And 
a little, a little persuasion, and there it is. And that gives you access to the rear leg springs. That is important that we need to get out. Okay, so the complete teardown is almost there, guys. As far as the guts, uh, not not the legs. The legs we'll get into next, but I'm showing you how to get to the legs right here. And uh, there's that one little screw I punch out, and there it is, keeping them all straight. Again, this blue uh, mat is super nice to have. So now I'm looking at the power board where the battery plugs in, and where the motors are us actually soldered onto because I need to get to it to uh, actually uh, look at this front and right motor you can see it has a little black lining around it and that's the one that caused the crash where the prop leaf came off and the motor wobbled and burned right into the um, Right into the leg, right into the plastic. I'll show you that uh, a little later in the close-up. All right, so I got the screws out. There's a total of three screws, and uh, there's a tab that holds it. Ah, check that. There's one more screw here. Uh, and there's a tab that slides into the battery compartment that you have to um, kind of bend the, uh, or push forward the circuit board. It's a little stiff because you have uh, all these wires that are soldered onto the board that uh, are from the motor, so they're pretty stiff, you know, they're pretty heavy gauge wires. So you'll see me next. I'll get the pry bar once I get my screws organized and my tools out of the way, and then it was time to try to get it out and it wouldn't come out then I figured out that it had that little tab there and so I'll get the pry bar push it forward and get that tab out and then I know that all I have to do is wrestle wrestle with it and get the cables to cooperate uh, again like I said they're stiff and then I'm going to show you the battery connector here I'll, I'll do a close-up for you guys to see it better uh, you can see that uh, yeah, it's coming along quite well. So that is basically almost the whole teardown of this printed circuit boards in here. I mean, the only thing you have to do is unsolder all the joints and pull it apart. Again, I'm going to do that later on one of the uh, legs that I'm going to replace. But at this point in time, I am going to go ahead and proceed on and replace that leg here coming up. So... And I'm also going to give you a quick look at the motor. So this is the access panel to get to that spring that I was telling you about for the folding springs. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how to take off the front motors. Okay. So it's got this little LED plastic cover and it's just held in by tabs. And then you got two screws holding down the front legs. And once you fold it, uh, get the screws out, you'll slide this leg out and away from the drone. And then you can see there's the antenna, okay? I'm not sure which one that is, the FPV or the flight controller antenna, but there you go. You can see the EFCs right there also. And uh, one of the things that uh, Hubson does when you replace legs, they don't, they give you the leg with the ESC solder to it, but they don't give you the motors, which I thought that was kind of cheap, because Femi, they give you the motor attached to the leg. So all you have to do is put it on and you're ready to rock and roll. Where here, you have to actually remove the motor, is what I'm doing right now. Um, there's three screws attached to the motor. Okay, and you can see the motor is right here. And the reason why I'm doing this, I wanted to test the drone uh, without the motor being soldered onto the ESC. Uh, so the server controller board um, probably sends a signal back to the main system board saying, hey, I'm okay, Let's, it's okay to proceed to the next test, right? Because my, all right, so giving you a really cool close-up of 
where the wires go. He just noticed that uh, the yellow wires in the middle and uh, the ground wires up top, right? And then uh, I'll be using a solder wick. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but I burned my finger here a little bit coming up. You can see me, I release it really fast. Uh, it hurt. Uh, but yeah, I'm just using it to remove the solder from those joints so I can pull those uh, wires out, right? So once I got them out, I'm going to go ahead and take out some more solder because I'm going to have to put them back in. So I need that pad to be clean, They're, you know, of solder. And the way you do it is you use the solder wick. Okay, so there's the motor. And this is the one that took a beating and I'll take it apart and show you what it looks like with the windings and that's the beautiful thing about brushless motors you know just one two bearings in the middle and that that is it and the propellers attach you know to the black part and then spin but yeah, it's a very it's magnetic. I mean, it's hard to pull it out. You have to pull it hard because the magnets are holding it in place. So I'm putting little washers back, and then I am going to install the. Oh, I forget what this lock pin is called, but uh, you'll see me uh, installing that next. And once I get that installed. I, I, th I believe I decided to uh, test the drone without it. All right, so you have to be careful here. Make sure you don't lose your little tiny parts. Okay, and that's why I put my thumb on it in case I pinched it on there and it flew away from me. Uh, there it is. There's the motor. Okay. So that's how it works, guys. Alright, so now it's time to put it all back together and test. So I'm just going to put the housing on it. and Just enough so I can uh, test without the motor. I'm curious to see if it was the ESC that burnt out or is the motor that burnt out. I later removed that ESC from the from the equation and the same thing occurred so I knew it wasn't in the leg the issue or the motor uh, it, I think the problem I'm having is that power control board in there must have taken a beating when it landed really hard on the pavement so now it's time to remove the silicon from the arm that I have to replace so there it is all right. All right, it's time to remove all the silicone from this uh, uh, solder joints here. And there's four of them there. And you'll see me later write down the order of the way the wires are soldered on here. Just to make sure that uh, I put them back the same way and I use my color pens or sharpies here red black red black just to make sure that uh, I didn't forget how to do it also you could use an example on the opposite side right so as you can see there's uh, two leads for the LEDs and there's two leads for the motors so, there we go get ready to take the arm off and so it's time to take the two screws off the hinge spring not sure what they're called but it's spring loaded and once you release them they pop so it's better to have the arm folded and this is the new arm and again Hubson doesn't sell the motors with the arm or Femi sells you the arms with the motors already attached so come on Hubson don't be so cheap, man. Give us the motors. That's just wrong. They're the same price. They're around 20 bucks from uh, AliExpress is usually where I get my parts from for both the Xeno and uh, the Femi. So it's time to put a soldering iron on these solder joints to get, 
get the cables loose as you can see I'm grabbing them with the two either tight area to work with so you got to be careful not to touch the plastic and I actually touched the plastic a little bit and you know didn't warp it or anything but it definitely um, um, burnt the little piece off okay so you can see the new arm versus the old arm and uh, I just so it's time to take off the LED off the of the back arm is much easier just two screws and pops out there's a little tab up front and you have to release it and now I'm taking the silicone off so I can get the quadruple zero screwdriver into this tiny little Phillips head in here I mean it's tiny and there we go able to get that in there get the screw out get the rest of the so now, since we have to transfer the motor over, I'm going to show you here the orientation of the cables. Again, the yellow is in the middle. Black, yellow, red. Time to pull these out. So It's a little tricky because the arm keeps moving while you're pulling. So I decided that it was easier to take the solder off the joint with the solder wick again. And got that done. Uh, like the battery on my camera ran out. So here I am pulling the screws off the motor. And uh, there's the motor. And then I'm going to put it into the new arm here. And it's time to screw the motor on there takes three screws to machine screws there we go so now it's time to solder the the motor leads back onto the electronic service controller right so the ESCs are so what I did was I needed to get all the solder off the wire or most of it, so I could get it through <coughs> the ESC solder pads. So I uh, use some of that solder wick to get that off there. And now I'm going to solder these first two wires first, uh, the red and the yellow, and then I'll do the black last. It was just too much tension on it. It just didn't wasn't working out for me so I was like okay I won't fight it let's go ahead and do this one first and then we'll do this one last and you can see that now that I got the ground wire through there the black wire I'm able to and I don't I don't like the way that looks it the, the pad didn't get the solder you can see there that as soon as I put the <coughs> soldering iron on it it looked pretty nice okay there we go. And I was really anxious to test to see if this was going to fix um, or help me diagnose the problem I've been having with the, the Xeno 2. As soon as you turn it on, it just goes click, 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 like a servo is trying to kick in, uh, and it doesn't work. <laughs> so uh, that's where I'm at. So it's time to get this ESC in on the arm, and it takes a, a total of three screws, guys. One up front and uh, two on each side, and uh, I just put the screw in in it just to kind of settle it down, and then I took it off and put the cover on and. I'm going to show you what the old one looked like, the broken arm. Time to wrap the wires through the right location. So, pretty easy. And then uh, time to put the spring back in here, the arm spring. 
there it is and now I'm going to use some needle nose with angle needle nose down and I put them in, in the holes and then pushed it down with my pry bar and you can see it going in there pretty well and uh, I'm happy with that just testing it and now it's time to put the secure it down with the two screws they provided and there they are and then I'll test the arm make sure it works correctly I, I know it does because I, I, I tested it at least I think I did All right, so this is the tricky part again. It's hard to see the way the camera is focusing on the, on the soldering iron instead of the solder joints that I'm working on. And it's just you know tight area to work with. So you're kind of working down in this valley where you have the battery compartment and the gimbal compartment kind of infringing on your workspace here. Uh, but, you know, I managed to get it done. Just trying to do the soldering left hand, it wasn't my cup of tea, and I should have spun the drone all the way around to begin with. Uh, but I decided that my left hand was good enough to handle that soldering iron. And, ah, uh, you know what, it wasn't that comfortable for me. That, I eventually turned the, turned the Xeno 2 all the way around and, and, and uh, start soldering that way. So we uh, decided that it was better to tin the wire first with a little bit more solder. And that way I just barely touch it and it will stick to the pad when I uh, got the pad hot enough. And then I had a really hard time getting in here. I really did. It was just real tight quarters. Should have been doing it this way to begin with. But, hey, live and learn. It's one of those things that you're thinking about the camera too much as you're trying to get your job done, you know. Uh, so you kind of compromise a little bit of how you do things because of the fact that you have a camera on it. Alright, so time to double check this one last joint. I, it felt like the solder bled over a little bit to the next joint, so I checked it and it was okay. It's time to route the cables through this little nook that they provided. And so now it's time to put everything back. So it's time to put the sensor board back in there, which has got the cameras and uh, the other sensors on it. Pretty straightforward, four screws. Screw it down. And I actually used a regular ribbon cable to do the communications off that board onto the main system board which is pretty pretty nice <coughs> so time to put everything back together assemble it and do a little testing. Yeah, and again, tight quarters to work with. You got to move some cables around, and 
It took me like three tries to get this screw right down the, sh the chute where I needed to go. But yeah, it seemed to work pretty well. So, yeah, and uh, I'm actually taking it off because I crimped the cable on the front right arm a little, a little too much. It didn't, didn't fit right. So. I had to undo it and try to get it uncrimped or try to get it to relax. Oh, and yeah, this that little piece broke. <laughs> so now it's the right front part of this board is not anchored um, as usual. And I plan to put it back if if it worked. I would take it apart and put it all back. But at this stage of the game I'm just kind of maybe using this drone as a part stoner. Not sure. If it's going to be an organ donor or not. <laughs> it all depends. What I find out. How much his boards are. and Then I can figure out the next steps. Okay. Alright. So I feel. Better about the way the. The cables are out it. And. So I. Buckle down the rear um, plastic piece and four screws hold hold it together. It takes four screws here on the top for this rear plastic piece and two on the bottom. Coming in right next to um, the cover. Yeah, there you go. Next to the uh, arm cover is what I meant to say. All right. Time to do the system board. Then when you put it in, you have to put in at an angle to get the micro SD card slot to slide through the body of the drone. All right, putting the antennas back. Uh, you know, one of the good things that I did was I uh, labeled this antenna, and that's the one that's farthest back or away from its nose. It takes a little bit of a wrestling that little cable in the right location. I shouldn't say wrestling, but aligning it just right to push it down so it doesn't, you know, destroy the little pin to transfer the signals from the board to the antennas, or from the antennas to the board. Alright, everything looks good. And you, I'm not sure if you got a chance to see this. There's the micro SD card there by my thumb. Uh, USB port also. <laughs> and that's the one that kind of you gotta get it get it into the side of the body first before you do anything else. There's some very large heat sinks. Notice that copper uh, wiring, uh, uh, not wiring, copper um, tape. Yeah, copper tape. I was trying to say to transfer the heat away from uh, these chips.
So one of the things you got to do is you got to get the antenna little cables underneath the plenum, the fan plenum there, so they don't get all bound up on, on something else. You can see me messing with them there, and I'm happy with that. And so I'll just go ahead and put the Mylar ribbon cable on to the board. It comes up from the power board to this main system board. It's nice that they did put a nice fan here, and it's nice that they did a uh, plenum here to take the heat away from that chip, right? So they're pulling that heat away from that chip and throwing that out the <laughs> side. Or vice versa, pulling the air in and throwing it down on the chip. I'm not sure which way the airflow goes, uh, but I would think that's the case, because most of the time you're gonna fly forward I don't know. You can see how they have this air direct little shield that I'm screwing in now. It's a little mm. black piece there with the little curbs. So I'm not 100% sure which way the air is flowing. But it's definitely doing a good job keeping the cool. I know I got a chance to fly my Femi X8 and my Mavic Air 2, and they have very large heat sinks on the bottom. So sometimes when you got to hand catch them, uh, you can tell that they're hot, especially this week when I've been flying. Here in Virginia, temperatures have been like 95 degrees. Heat index is a 105 and above. So and trying to stay cool by using one of those uh, oh, small little towels that look like, I don't know, like little thin sponges you roll up into a little canister. Man, those things work great. It takes a lot of heat away from the back of your neck. Keeps you cool. And if you jump into some body of water to cool off, you can just pull that out and dry yourself off with it. Now, been trying to fly the drones only about 15 minutes at the very most. Alright, so we got that board installed and got the cables all done. Now it's time to test to make sure that the gimbal fits in here correctly, and it does. So everything's looked pretty good. The hardest part is going to be to get this Mylar ribbon cable connector back onto that board. And sure enough, it's not that bad, but it takes a little patience to get it right. Time to put the four screws in. And again, making sure you're using the correct screws is always important. So this blue pad here Oh my gosh, the silicone pad is so useful. It keeps track of all your screws. You just have to figure out a pattern or where to put the screws and just work clockwise, you know what I mean? Or counterclockwise, whatever you decide. So I'm playing with the gimbal there and checking the little dent that I put on the camera when uh, this thing crash landed on Monument Avenue. And I'll put a link in or a card in so you guys can follow what I'm talking about. So, it's time to test. You can see I'm popping the battery in it. I'm gonna turn it on. No motor. And, uh, you know, when I turn it on, same, same problem. It's not working. No fans turning. It's dead. Like, dad, dad. <laughs> Gimbal's not... You hear it click, 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 click? Yeah. So, I'm going to turn it off. There's the power off. So, all that work, the reseeding and all that, didn't solve the problem. So, there was nothing obviously wrong with the board. Obviously, something burnt up. And that was caused by that one motor. And it crash. Actually, the prop 
leaf breaking completely off the drone, caused the motor to be not balanced, and uh, it caused it to crash. So now it's time to put the top part of the plastic piece on, and there's four screws here on, actually six screws here on the bottom. Two up front, two in the middle, uh, four in the middle. And there, there we are. Now it's time to test again. Nope, put it away. Sorry about that. It's time to put it away. And that is it. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, guys. If you like the contents of the channel, hit that subscribe button, guys. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.